In this enchanted forest, beneath the gracefully swaying treetops, is something truly spectacular, something most people never have a chance to see, the lemur. Lemurs are very important because they're the living representatives of the ancient, ancient ancestors of all primates. Evolutionists believe these furry, wide-eyed critters are man's distant cousin. Supposedly the monkey species are higher primates, they're more like us. And these little guys that are called lower primates or prosimians are actually um, better. They catch on faster, they're very clever. They're very curious, they're very agile, and they're, well, the reason that they're still in existence is they're one of the most adaptable animals in the world. Adaptable indeed, considering their native home is on the island of Madagascar, off Africa. So what could lemurs and the Gulf Coast of Florida have in common? A woman who loves both. She's the oldest one on the reserve. She's 22. Okay, guys. Penelope Beaudry Sanders is executive director of the Lemur Conservation Foundation, a scientific research facility quietly nestled in the Mayaca City Reserve. We have a 90 acre reserve, and we have a captive breeding program, scientific research, education, and hopefully eventually reintroduction to Madagascar. Since the lemur reserve is not open to the public, observing these prosimians up close is quite a privilege. And they're not afraid of people here? Well, they're, they're certainly habituated by people, but even in Madagascar, the, the animals are very curious. And if you go to a totally wild place, they'll sit in a tree right next to you and stare down at you. So they're, they're not afraid of people in, in general. Ironic, considering people are the reason the lemur species is endangered. Since humans arrived on the island of Madagascar more than 1,200 years ago, 16 species of lemurs have become extinct. Deforestation and hunting threaten their survival. Seeing it in person is what touched Penelope. And I was flying over Madagascar, which happens to also be called the Red Island because the earth is very red. I was flying over and the, the island is so deforested and the, the, the gouges in the earth go all the way down to the sea. When you're flying over, this red earth leaching into the Indian Ocean looks like it's bleeding. It looks like the island is bleeding. It was so, just all that, just by itself, that was so overwhelming. I started to cry on the airplane. Once she met the lemurs, her heart bled for them even more. I started studying lemurs. I started learning about how truly phenomenal and fantastic they are and how important they are to research. With just $35,000, she started the Lemur Conservation Foundation and opened the gates to researchers and students. It's how program manager Monica Hoffine got her start. We don't know a lot about them, so there's more question marks than answers, which means that I get to do more investigating and actual make an impact. Like, what I learn here will actually matter because no one else will have learned it before. It's breakfast time, the lemur's only prepared meal of the day. Can you tell me what the chow is? Mm -hmm, yeah, this is monkey chow. It's um, otherwise known as a monkey biscuit, and it has all of their minerals, proteins, vitamins, a little bit of fat, um, and it's a supplement to their natural produce diet. The rest of the day, the lemurs forage in a place quite different from their African home. These lemurs that live here in this forest have totally adapted to this Florida environment. They are able to eat over 32 species of plants and animals that are indigenous to Florida. And as they dine, you can witness mannerisms that apparently have not evolved much in almost 60 million years. I saw that red female just getting awful bossy with everybody. <laughs> Most lemurs are female dominant. 
they take preferential um, food sites and if the resting sites. They just knock the boys out of the way. There are a couple of species or kinds of lemurs that are not female dominant. They're pretty equal. Those are the ones I like better. Right. <laughs> Red-ruffed sisters, hail and bop, they are called, rule the roost with their larger size and their assertive attitudes. These particular lemurs are the king and queen of lounging. You know how like iguanas lounge around and have it down to an art form? These guys make iguanas look energetic. Other lemur species also have distinct personality traits. The mongoose lemurs are my favorites. They're really curious. A lot of lemurs are only interested if there's food involved, but the mongoose lemurs are just curious about new things, regardless of whether there's a food tree at the bottom of that new thing or not. Like little hobbits, these bamboo lemurs merrily navigate the forest. But it wasn't always that way, especially after their mother died. At first, the boys weren't able to stay together. They were so used to following their mother that when they lost the leader, they scattered, they would be, one would be on one part of the forest, the other would be in a different part of the forest. But they've got it together now. Um, they use contact calls again to find each other, and now they stick together pretty closely. But the ringtails are the most animated of the bunch. The ringtails are the most cohesive of the species we have here. Um, they groom each other extensively, they huddle up together, they sleep together, um, they eat together, they try to stick close together and they interrupt important interviews together. I suspect that, I, I'm sorry, that was um, a warning call. One of the ringtail lemurs saw something that alarmed him and called out so the others would know to be alarmed as well. animals are really spectacular and we're losing them. The, the populations are going down and the more interested we are in them, the more likely it is that their habitat is going to be saved in Madagascar. As scientists visiting the foundation continue to study the lemurs, they learn more about the animals and maybe more about us.